Sundara Chola looked at his Selvak Kumari and said, Kundave. I have to talk to the Prime Minister about Kingdom Affairs. You go and look after your affairs. Take this with you when you go. Let your mother stay here for a while. Said. It was Mandakini whom the Emperor referred to as this too. His distaste for her was evident from that remark. Kundava looked at her father with some disappointment. Observing this, the Emperor said, Yes, it is better to find out if it is the Kailasa mountain in the Silpa Mandapath that she has knocked. Take her there and show her. I cannot bear her standing here. Kundave took Mandakini by the hand with a disappointed face and left. Then Malayaman's daughter came close to Kundave and whispered in her ear, Child! She can't bear to see her now? What's the use of getting upset with father? Let's show her all your decorative arts skills. She said. Kundave showed her consent with a smile and took Mandakini from there. Vanati and Pungazali left with them. Then Sundara Chola looked at the Prime Minister and Malayaman's daughter alternately and said, I don't know why you two have done this thing together. If you thought that this would make me happy, you are very wrong. Prime Minister! Why did you take such pains to bring this wild creature from Kodakari? Now tell the truth. Tell me. Don't try to hide anything from me again. Said. We intended to dispel that thought by bringing before them the lady whom they thought had died because of them. We thought that if we bring it in person and stop it, you will believe it. If this is a crime, please be merciful and forgive. On hearing this, the emperor became furious and said, Crime! Crime! All these days she has been around me as a ghost. She has been tormenting me in my dreams. Instead of a ghost, you have brought a beggar and placed her in front of me. Did you think this would make me happy? Not even a day. If you had told me the truth earlier, she would I would have definitely rejected the idea of bringing her here. You have done something to let her go. You have taken so much trouble to bring this dumb madwoman here? When and how do you intend to make her go? When Sundara Chola heard this, Anuradha was truly speechless. Then Chakravarthini said, Swami. I do not intend to make my sister go back from here. She will stay with me in this palace. I will worship her like my own son born before me. She said. There were many reasons for my love for her then. That love has completely changed in these twenty-five years to malice and obnoxiousness. She has troubled me so much in my dreams and memories. I could not bear the thought of her being in this palace. Immediately send her away from here and try again. Thinking that she was a ghost, I threw the lamp on her. I don't know what I would have done if I had known that she was alive and well. I could not bear the thought of her being in this palace. Immediately send her away from here and try again. Thinking that she was a ghost, I threw the lamp on her. I don't know what I would have done if I had known that she was alive and well. I could not bear the thought of her being in this palace. Immediately send her away from here and try again. Thinking that she was a ghost, I threw the lamp on her. I don't know what I would have done if I had known that she was alive and well. Thus Sundara Chola's cruel words spoken in a voice full of hatred, the emperor and the chief minister were shocked. They never expected the emperor to speak like this. Anuradha had thought that the emperor would condemn him only for his old crime. She expected that the Maharani or the emperor would appreciate her generous deed even if he did not say it openly. Sundara Chola's deadly words disappointed them and caused them some resentment and anger. As if to top off all that had been said by the emperor, he said, Sichi, what would be the loss of this dumb madwoman if she had not lived in the world? How much better it would have been if she had really died and been lost when she fell into the sea? What great fool Minakatu took and saved her? Said. After this, Malayaman's daughter could not bear it. With melting anger, she said, Swami. Don't say that with your mouth. It's a sin. How many elders have said that forgetting gratitude is a fatal disadvantage? Forget if you want that this matter a sea saved your life. But can you forget that she saved our precious son Aromas Hivarman? Even if you forget, I can't forget. 
for fourteen births I owe thanks to this daughter of the goddess. She said that. Devi, are you telling me to reread that story? Before Sundara Chola could speak further, Malayaman's daughter interrupted, Not a story, Swami. Arom as I himself told me. He said that the goddess who saved him from the Kaveri floods had saved him many times in the island of Elam. Fortunately, he has arrived at Nagapatanam and is safe. Get him brought. Listen and find out for yourselves. Yes, yes. Aromazai is in Nagapatanam. But what is certain that he is well? Did he have any danger in yesterday's great storm? Prime Minister. I have no peace in my soul. It seems that some unknown danger is approaching my clan. This mute beggar's arrival here at this time is a looks ominous. Swami. It is not a bad omen that the Karayar clans have come here at this time, it is a good omen. This person is a protection for our clan. Durga Parmswari, to whom I pray incessantly, has blessed me and sent this goddess. No way, Durga Parmswari didn't send it, Saniswaran did. Tell that beggar to go back immediately and try again. If you can't, I'll have to do it myself. Swami. Be so merciful as to grant me this boon. Allow him to remain in this palace till the blessing arrives. The Empress heard this in a warm voice and bowed by touching the feet of Sundara Chola. Prime Minister. Have you heard? Have you heard the request of the Malayan daughter who thinks that all white is milk? God. Can there be such a guileless sadhu in the world? She asks for nothing of me. She asks for such a boon over and over. I don't have the heart to refuse it. But every minute that dumb madwoman is here is hell to me. It will be painful. Therefore, make arrangements at once to fetch the prince from Naga. I will do so, sir. Shall we send troops of elephants and cavalry and publicly fetch the prince? Or... Are you asking whether we can disguise ourselves and bring him secretly? Do you think that there will be great confusion in the Chola country if the prince comes openly? I'm not the only one thinking, Lord. I know for sure. People are angry for many reasons. There has to be some kind of mischief, the people's anger will come out immediately. There's no telling what fate the Palyavatare and Madhurandak Deva will meet. What is this talk? Prime Minister. If the citizens are behaving so outrageously, where have the brave Chola armies gone? There is a lot of anger among the soldiers, Lord. The people will be subdued with shouting and confusion. The army soldiers will reduce the fort of Tanjore to pieces, imprison the Palyavatarais and Madhuran Thakdavar, and put Aromas Hivarmara, the famous warrior, in Singh Adana. You are also desiring in your heart that this should happen. Citizens are wandering in their wits by believing the stories made up by foolish astrologers. But keep one thing in your mind for sure. Madhurantha, the son of the steps that my great master found, is the rightful one for this Chola throne. I have decided to give him the title. Even if the people forbid it, even if the gods and the gods come and prevent it, I will not listen. If my sons stand in the way of it. Swami. Such a day will never happen. Their sons will never forbid a day against their wishes. Aromazai has no desire for kingdom. They gave him the crown of Sri Lanka. He refused it. Is such a person going to contradict their word? What is Kari Galan? He himself is Yuvaraja. You gave him the consecration and so he agreed. Shall I tell you about his heroic prowess? Isn't he able to establish a great kingdom by himself with the help of his mighty sword if he so desires? But he also has no desire to rule the kingdom. They only have to say one word to him about what they want. I'm going to say that word, because it's going to fall on his ears, no matter how much I tell him, he's going to make a game of not coming here. Emperor The crown prince has constructed a magnificent golden palace at Kanchi and awaits their arrival. I know what he is waiting for. He is waiting to imprison us as Kamsan imprisoned his parents and ascend the Chola throne. Whether he is building a palace of gold or a palace of lacquer, who knows? Swami. 
What a terrible thing you say about Kari Kalan! said Malayaman's daughter. They have poisoned the emperor's soul so far, said the prime minister. There is no one else, it is Kari Kalan himself who has poisoned my mind. If he is my true son, why has he not come, no matter how many times I have sent him? asked Sundara Chola. Couldn't there be other valid reasons? You're the one who's inferring a reason. There is talk all over the country that if he comes to carry Galan Kala Dam, the Pula Vetarayans will imprison him. Someone has spoiled my son's mind by calling him auntie. Her father is a Malay Aman from Tirakovalar and a Velan from Kajumbalar. I don't know if you joined them or not. Swami. I do not talk about anyone behind their back. You yourself spoke of danger a little while ago. You said that it appears in their hearts. It is absolutely true. Danger is approaching for the Cholas. It comes in two ways. There are two kinds of conspiracies going on in this country now. And Sam Buvaris. Prime Minister Anuradha. Stop, the Palyavar dynasty has been giving charity to the Chola clan for a hundred years. The great Palyavatare has fought on twenty-four fronts and bears sixty-four sores on his mane. Rather than say that such a man is plotting against the Chola clan today, the sun has darkened and the sea is on fire. You can trust what they say. Emperor. The sun is also eclipsed. The Vadeva Mukhekanai is burning in the sea water. But I did not come to tell you about that. I never said that the Palyavatareyas are plotting against the Chola clan. They are making great efforts to crown Madhurand Hagar. What is wrong in thinking of giving title to the son of Kandaradatha, a great devotee of Shiva? The right to the throne rightfully belongs to Madhurandhagan himself, said the emperor. I am saying the same thing and you have decided to give the Chola crown to Madhurandakdeva of your own free will. Then what is the crime against the Palyavatarayas? They are trying to fulfill their wish. So they've been the vessel for my gratitude. But the emperor is also doing some things that do not get their consent. They are thinking of dividing the Chola kingdom into two parts and giving the south of Kaveri to Madhuran Thakdeva and the northern part to Kari Kalar. The talk is going on today in the Sambhavarayar mansion. Emperor. The kingdom that their ancestors worked hard to expand for a hundred years. Do they agree to divide the Chola Maharajya established by Vijayalaya Chola, Adita Chola and Mahaparantaka Emperor from Elam to Godavari into two? Prime Minister. One day I will agree to it. I don't believe that Palyavatarayar would have taken such an attempt to cut me before dividing the Chola kingdom. Perhaps I would have liked it. He would have agreed to the idea because I might wish to give at least half of the kingdom to my son. I don't like it. If he knows, he will give it up. Prime Minister. I will tie the title to Madhurandhagan without losing even an inch of area in this Chola Empire. Whether my people oppose it or Palyavatara opposes it, I am not going to listen to it. Emperor. You don't need to worry if the Palavatarayar opposes. Their sons are not going to oppose. But these are not all the obstacles to crowning Madhurandhagar. The obstacle comes from an even greater place. The obstacle comes from the goddess whom you and I all the people of this Chola country worship. I even spoke to her a few days ago. You are referring to Champion Mathavi. Someone has also corrupted the mind of that queen. The big brat thinks that I want to give titles to my sons. Prime Minister. Arrange for her to be brought here immediately. I will change her mind. Emperor. It is not so easy. Mahan Kandaradatha commanded his wife in the same way. I was by his side on his deathbed. There is an important reason why Madurantha should not be crowned, my consort knows it, said their great Patanar. Prime Minister. Is there really such a ban? Do you know what it is? If I knew, would I wait for you to ask? Let the big brat be brought in and ask and find out for yourselves. Yes that one thing is troubling me too. Arrange for the big brat to be brought at once. I will remove whatever obstacle there may be. Who can be sent to fetch him? Why I am sending my maiden. Devi. 
Bring Kundave hither at once. Said Sundara Chola looking at Malayaman's daughter. Even though Goddess Vanama was listening with one ear to the conversation between the Emperor and the Prime Minister, her attention was on the mute queen who had just passed by. So when the Emperor told him to bring Kuntave, Malayaman's daughter rushed to Apuram from there. When she reached that temple, Kuntave, Vanathi and Pungazalai were engrossed in the crowd. The Maharani immediately knew the reason. The dumb queen was missing there. When anxiously asked where, Kundave said, Mother. It was not an easy task to carry out their orders. However, we three together insisted and bathed Goddess Mandakini. Then we dressed her in new clothes. Vanati was brushing her hair. Pungajali was blooming. While taking the ornaments, she heard her scream. When he came back, he did not see Mandakini Devi. As soon as he combed his hair, he suddenly ran away. Nowhere in the neighboring rooms, we are still looking. Hearing this, Malayaman's daughter smiled. Did he have a mirror in front of him when he got dressed? She asked. It was, it was a little way off, said Vanati. He must have accidentally seen his beautified image in the mirror. It would have embarrassed him. So he would run and hide somewhere. Look harder. Maybe he's hiding in that park. Jumping over the wall and jumping through the computer is his usual routine. Said the emperor. Then they all went to Nandavana and searched. The dumb queen was not caught there, their anxiety increased. When they started to think whether they should go and inform the prime minister and the emperor, a sound of Dana Dana came from somewhere. A sound like that of an iron chisel hammering on black stone. They carefully listened to where the sound was coming from. It seemed to be coming from the sculpture hall. Immediately they all went to the sculpture hall leaving a nurse to bring the lamp. Inside the sculpture hall they saw a strange sight. Mandakini, who appeared to be partially dressed and holding a long-handled hammer in her hand, was beating the arms of Ravensvara, who was supporting Mount Kailash. As the sculpture was made of very solid stone, Ravana did not even budge to the attack. But soon he was in danger. If two or three of Ravana's arms, which were supporting Mount Kailash, were to break off, the mountain itself might move and sit on his heads even better. Heads may shatter into hundreds of pieces. It was during such a critical crisis that Kundave etc. entered the sculpture hall. Heads may shatter into hundreds of pieces. It was during such a critical crisis that Kundave etc. entered the sculpture hall. Heads may shatter into hundreds of pieces. It was during such a critical crisis that Kundave etc. entered the sculpture hall. On seeing their arrival, Mandakini dropped the hammer in her hand and stood with a smile on her face. She is a mad beggar. No wonder the emperor is disgusted with her. Except Fungajalai, who entered the hall. The thought appeared. Malayaman's daughter looked at the others and said, Ladies, let no one mention this in front of the emperor. She warned.